Hey there. Today we have a new book to cover. It's Metal Bay's Complete Book of Harmony, Theory and Voicing by Brett Wilmot. This is one of the best books I have seen in a while. I'm really excited about it. And I'm going to talk about what it's about, how I use it in my practice. And I'll show you some examples of how you can use it or the information to improve your playing, I guess. So it's a lot of information. So it's better that we just kind of get right into it rather than me explaining all the theory and stuff. So I'm going to jump into chapter seven which he calls Tension 9, and we'll see what it's about. So here, we want to create a chord with a, a ninth, the extension 9. So first he lists all the different chord types that there is, like uh, C major 7, C major 7 flat 5, C minor major 7, C minor 7, C minor 7 flat 5, C6, C minor 6, C7, and all the different dominant chords so there's quite a lot right and the idea is that we want to add a ninth to this chord so if we have an a minor 7 for example that's an a minor 7 the ninth would be here but i can't really do that i guess you could do that on piano but it's not very user friendly on the guitar Plus, that would be a five-part chord. We're looking for four-part chords, which means we need to replace the ninth with another note from an already existing chord voicing. So if we take minor seven, here's A minor seven, drop to four-part chord, top four strings. You should obviously know this stuff, all the inversions. If you don't know minor chords or chord inversions, drop two voicings, you might want to look into that before you look at the rest of this video. So these are the inversions of an A minor chord. A minor 7, four part chord. So it's a root, there's a minor 3rd, flat 7, and the 5th. We want the ninth, adding one extension. The most common thing to do this is what you learn if you study big band arranging and stuff like that, is that you can replace the root, the A, with the ninth. So I replace the A for a B. That's A minor ninth, even though obviously I'm not playing the A and we don't need to. That's the kind of thing that's different from jazz, that separates jazz from other genres of music. I think is that when a jazz player sees a chord symbol, A minor 7, we understand from the context what scale it is and what function the chord has, that we can add, we can do whatever we want with that chord, we can add extensions, right, and we can, depending on the context, what style of jazz it is and the, what the melody note is and stuff like that, but we can pretty much add any extension we want. Whereas if you're playing on a, a pop gig, you're, it doesn't work like that. Not to diminish pop in any way, it's just different uh, styles of playing. So we see an A minor chord and we want to add a ninth. We do that. I mean, you could grab the bass note because in this case we can. It could be the open string, right? We all, but what happened, we created a different type of chord, we, we created a C major 7 over A, even though we're not playing A, it's still A minor, right? But it's also C major 7, right? So we could play the inversions of that. And this, we've all played this, maybe not this as much, and this, and this is beautiful. These are A minor 9. I think most of you are following me at this point. But you have to be a little bit careful when you do this because it might not always sound like an A minor depending on where you play it, where you put it in the what register. If I play this here, 
an octave lower, that doesn't sound like A minor anymore. So it depends a little bit on where you play it and what notes you put in the bottom and stuff like that. And the book talks about that. He will say that this voicing is not relevant or it's not applicable or whatever. So because if you play this when it, you're supposed to play an A minor and you play this, then you're kind of changing things a little bit too much, right? So there's a kind of a fine line there where it stops functioning as a minor chord and becomes something else, which you have to kind of, it's your job as a musician to know where that fine line is. All right, so we have created an A minor nine chord. Now the question is, can't we replace any of the other notes with the, the ninth? Yes. So we replace the root with the ninth. I can do this. Now I replace the seventh, the flat seven with the ninth. There's no flat seven in this chord. Now all of a sudden, we have a new A minor 9. Also pretty straightforward. The, the inversions are going to be a little bit trickier here. What I would do is I would think of this chord and then just raise the 5th to the 6th, the G to the A. say there's not a big difference there's a huge difference listen to this and this sometimes I find that jazz musicians tend to overlook that they're just thinking oh it's uh, a minor 9 I you can do whatever you want but you want to pay attention to what does this sound like as opposed to this that's the kind of the little differences, the nuances that makes the difference when you're choosing what chord to use, right? Okay, what else can we do? We can replace the, the fifth, also A minor 9. Notice that we've only played drop two voicings at this point, and we only played a um, four-part chords and we haven't added any other extensions only one extension we're exhausting all the possible combination of adding a ninth now the inversions are getting really tricky uh, this one is not even necessarily uh, relevant something Alan Holdsworth would play. Uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah. The last one is relevant. I'm, I usually uh, shy away from these stretchy chords because I don't want to hurt myself. Uh, just put the top note on the bottom instead. This chord is actually an inversion of this. Sorry, of this. Right? So already I've created a whole bunch of different... How many was it? I don't know. We have one note left to replace the ninth with, and that's the third. So I, instead of playing a third, I play ninth, and I get this. And now some of you are thinking, wait a minute, how can it be a minor chord if there is no minor third? So we're thinking a little bit more modally here. And yes, the further 
you get away from the harmony, it's going to sound more and more ambiguous or vague. Because usually you would like to have the, the seventh and the third in the chord, and then you add extensions. That's the normal way to do it, right? You play the seventh and the third. They're also the guide tones, like you need them. But not in the modern jazz, you don't need them. They often do what's referred to as third less voicings because that opens up the harmony and it becomes more open. So the best way for me to demonstrate that is to play something. So let's say you have this. Right? Uh, footprints. Right? There is no third in that melody, but the bass line is all about the third. It's like a, a drone. So, as a contrast, Herbie Hancock is not playing a lot of thirds. I think he's playing this, which is a C minor with a third dropped to a second or ninth, which is exactly what we're talking about. This is a closed voicing. So, if I play a C minor with a third dropped to a ninth, I get this, which is perfect for this tune. that would be an example of a situation where you want a sound that is more open and doesn't give you the third. So imagine the difference between a more uh, less experienced jazz player and play this tune, they might play, you know, C minor seven like that, in campfire style, as opposed to a more, more finesse But having said that, sometimes this is what you want. I think there's a danger that we jazz musicians, we get lost in, in the idea of we should be so hip and cool all the time that we need to play all these fancy voicings. But sometimes you want the, for me anyway, I want the sound of the guitar. I want the, the typical guitar chord. There's nothing wrong with that. So we shouldn't uh, think that this way of playing is superior to other styles of music or anything like that. It's just a different... When Herbie Hancock is playing those chords on Footprints, it's very different from when we're playing, you know... But this is also good, so I digress. Okay, so now you get the idea how he's able to find every combination of a minor 7 chord adding a ninth. I think those were all the combinations for if we're doing 4 part chords drop 2, right? So then you do it with all the other chord types, right? And that's why a page in this book could look like this. Right? So that's a lot of, lot of combinations. Then you take the other extensions, the 11th and the 13th. And when you get into the dominant chords, you get all sorts of combinations. It could be flat nine, sharp nine, flat five, you know, so there's a ton of stuff. So that's going to take a, quite a while to go through all these.
right? And it can be kind of, kind of, uh, some people shy away from that, but they, I mean, this is a thick book. I don't know, uh, 247, 248 pages. Some people shy away from that because like, oh my God, that's a lot of work. And I, I've never understood that uh, attitude. For me, that's, I don't, I don't get it. It's like, imagine if you go to law school or med school or something and first day of the first semester they give you the professors give you these books you need to read these books this semester all these you need to know all this stuff and what if the student goes oh that's that's a lot of work yeah if you want to know how to do something you have to put in the work so but some people think like i don't want to do that work because i'm not interested in crazy chord voicings that's fine but if you like me want to sound like herbie hancock one day then you need to put in the work so that example of footprints there was not something from the book that was just me showing an example of how i use this information to put it in uh, context but what happens is that every now and then when he is through with like a chapter he'll there are little uh, etudes you can call them of chord progression so i'll find one of those where i hear this so uh he uses this uh, chord progression which is kind of like uh, bird blues or confirmation like you know this kind of chord progression c major b minus seven five five e So I guess it is. So you have the chords, symbols, and then the top note. A top note is just half notes randomly, but they could be kind of a motif or a pattern to them. And then you're supposed to add uh, the voicings that you just covered in that chapter to those notes and those chords. And hopefully you'll find new ways to play these chords. Because if we take this chord progression, for example, I'll play a little, I'll make a little backing track. So I'll play the bass line, just the bass notes. So if I saw that chord progression and those chord symbols and I was playing, I would probably play something like, I don't know. Guide tones with one added note. So that might sound really good to some of you, and I mean, there's nothing, I, some lines in there, some interesting movements, perhaps. But the thing is, I think you all have know this feeling where you get really tired of the stuff you're playing. I mean, it's gonna happen eventually because you're playing. If you play a lot of gigs, for example, you're gonna. It's inevitable that you play the same stuff over and over. You have to live with that. It can't be all fresh stuff all the time that's not realistic and not even desirable i mean it's you you want to play the same things to so to a certain degree but it's nice to be able to throw in fresh ideas and here in this example almost every chord is a little bit how should i put it uh, new to me 
and more or less relevant. But I'll show you what he, the example here, he's using different voicings pr from the chapter, uh, I guess it's chapter nine. So the first chord, he wants you to play this for the C, which is a G69 chord. And then for the B minus on flat five, he'll play this, which I would never do until now. The A minor chord, this. Also, I almost never, I don't think I ever play that. And then we have this. And then a G9, G flat 9. Like a James Brown chord, right? Over C. So I'll just play it and you will see, we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, so you see that's it gets a little bit ridiculous sometimes because it's too much but we're kind of practicing right it's not you wouldn't necessarily play like this right it's a little bit too much but you find new ways to play chords like for example the turnaround there at the end is like instead of playing that which is actually really lame right he'll play this Minor. This is kind of A altered, G minor 9, G altered, flat 5, flat 13, C add 9. And all of a sudden this fancy extensions and fancy voice leading is kind of happening. So they, it does cover voice leading a little uh, too. And uh, it doesn't focus too much on that. It's mostly like coming up with a course like this but you discover voice leading when you're doing it and you discover interesting ways of doing like two five ones, stuff like that, that you might never have thought of before. Right, so I forgot to mention something before that when you do that process, we add an extension. Sometimes the chord that you create is a what I call a generic voicing. You create another chord, so I, the C, minor C major 7 over A is A minor 9. That's a another generic chord on top of a new bass note creates a new chord. But that's this is a voicing in and of itself, like a regular voicing. But some of the voicings are not like that. They're more, I guess you could call them hybrid, but I don't know if hybrid is the right word. I think hybrid means two things merge together, right? So let's say if I do this, I can't give a name for this voicing. That would be adding the 13th to a A minor seven instead of the fifth, right? So, and then this chord could also then in be a whole bunch of other chords as well. So if we go back to this, this generic C major 7, it's an A minor 9, I could put F on the bass, now it's an F chord, a Lydian chord, it could be E in the bass, it could be a D sus, you could take it more extreme to like Ben Maunder level, an E flat, A flat, but the, this book doesn't go that far, I don't think. I've, I'm not quite through with the book yet, so maybe we'll see what happens. But, uh, so imagine now that all these new chords, all the generic chords, 
Major 7, Major 7 flat 5, Major 7 sharp 5, dominant sharp 5 and blah, 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 and so on. Could All those chords could have different bass notes. And then you have these hybrid chords, or I don't know what to call them, more random shapes that we can't assign a name to. They, in turn, could also have different bass notes and so the endless the possibilities are quite endless right so i instead of me showing you the example there exactly what i was playing that's not the point of this i'm showing you kind of what you learn if you get this book and this book actually is pretty easy to find a lot of these books unfortunately are out of print and very hard to find like the mick goodrick books and stuff like that but uh, I'm struggling myself to find certain books that I want to get my hands on, but I, they are out of print. This book is in, still in print, so you can get it, and I strongly recommend it. So I'm not even through with it yet, so I might make more videos. Triad over bass voicings. Okay. That's just like one page, right? Major seven chords. As if he talks about fourth voicings, he talks about triads over bass arpeggios, symmetrical motion, approach chords is something I'm looking forward to. Contrary motion that we have that diatonic motion. You know, unavailable half steps, doublings. Here, here's chapter fifteen. Additional anharmonic chordal substitutions knock yourself out so if you are a jazz guitar nerd like me you need this book i'll just leave you with a couple of examples of chords that i discovered for example this one so i don't even know what that is i guess we play this a lot if this is to me, it's like a B13 sharp nine. George Benson plays his chord. Uh, but here is with a sharp 11 as well. So. example when I play this I always play the same thing nothing wrong with it but it's about time that I learn some new ways to play voice those chords with the same melody I could pick any chapter in this book and find new ways to play that. I think I'm gonna do that right now actually. So I'll leave you with that and uh, definitely get this book and I shall see you next.